ông quỳ chọn ông chủ nhiệm đại học cả mình to cái chấm đại ca để tiếp thi sạm đại ca sạm đại ca được ngày nay ông nhiệm đại học nâng thư sạm đại ca sẽ đáp nơi sẽ đi sang đất than to rồi bỏ phía ký mà kháng mà kháng là nhiệm vụ cả đại cả xã còn lư bẹ pòn cho mình nâng ông hai thả co nâng trầm cọ thả co trầm cọ nâng mình đi sang đất sóc răng tây chăn cái nhà chia sẻ hoang lang rìa cam bị dịch thành là phía bắc tây miền ở bắc tây miền phía kí nâng bọc cột để ông nhập đây còn chơi nhà chơi rùm được nông cây chăm lá cà sạm lá cà ở thay này xong group lục bát thiên, xâm nhập sâm nạc ca nơi thay này, cả làng bình chí cắt xâm qua khởi thành group phía kí tiếng ó nơi riêng cái đây này miền bắc tây miền đòi lại lục nôn chía miền bắc tây miền nợ bản tục không khôn khang cầm xa sạm nạc ca này đại lục na sâm lẹ băng sắt miền vật tự miền đại tự vật bị bệnh tục sa vân cả đi khất lẹ băng sắt được bao chân chập chạp nuôn chi ban bạc cốt đo cả làm chi rồi hỏi cắt sầm cốt phẳng đáy bị vật tự miền lục liếp sầu vàng né đại công mê thủy ca bia cái đây nuôn chi ban na sâm ai ăn chủ nông chủ rẻ đo sắt cho rùm ca bia cái đây nơi khung sa vân cả chấm pua mộc ăn chủ nông chủ rẻ sầu lá đồng bồ sâm ao con lục bát thiên ba ao con ba chế độ bồ này ăn chủ rẻ sầm rai lời tập nào xong rồi bỏ chuyện chọc chọc nôn chia chỉ muốn sấn ông nhầm rẽ ban đầu tu lịch khất xong lại bằng sách cho rùm thạm sạm na ca đại pastor khôn ông bắt tụt sạm na ca ní rồi bỏ chuyện chọc chọc nôn chia cho ngày chỉ sám sấp khai mít sai cho năm bị phòng đọc rắm đại bình chế thái đại quan bên bảy nhà thuộc của phía sư cơ bá sư dương kê mình ai dân quê du bán mình ai chọn ở rom bản du nâng đầm bay miền là tập phía cho rùm sạm na ca để ngày mốc ở miền bắc tập phía luôn xong lại bằng sách cho rùm nâng miền bắc tập miền đại pastor khôn ông bắt tụt sạm na ca nơi thay thế tham sấp khai mê sai cho năm bị bọn đập rầm đời mình tự vi cà phê cái đây bọc luôn bàn pháp ông pi paul paul này cà lẹ bằng sứt ní thá cà lẹ bằng sứt ní mình ai bỏ sai thá chỉ cà lẹ bằng sứt nó bọc luôn nông cà cắt cái đây để dứt để thò rư sứt nông cà chấm to từ nông phò tang nông cà đã bằng hái rư đã chun từ lá cà ní cướp pi về liền này sạm nà cà lưu rụp luôn lời bàn khơi cầm nọt hai bên đất sọc phía chun chập chọt luôn chi để phơi lăng đại cướp về bị chạm cá vì nứt phía ba thay tom sọc phía chun chập chọt nơi ở vô tổ có cho ngày chi sám thấp khai mê sai cho năm bị phòng đọc rắm bàn có thông qua thá sẽ thay đập phía sọc phía bắt bọc ở lục ở nguồn chi thay ní miền ác rạ chư chẳng kể rằm rãi miền ác rộng bởi mốc bởi bóng lạc tì nâng bàn đo ảnh đồ xa thá xôm ông nhầm rẽ anh nhát ở lục nguồn chi cho rùm tạm đán cái chấm nà ca sạm nà ca vì mình tốc hàng trọng xa sạm nà ca đi ai lưu mô lô thán ní nâng dùng tạm bọc nhạt nây bởi thiên bài thơ mùi bàm nây bởi thiên tây khăn ông chủ nhiệm đẹp, dù pro nâng anh nhạt, ở chuyên chụp chọn nôn chi, bản to cho rùm nâng tam đan cái chấm đại ca sạm đại ca bị chấm ngái, bị mật tục không khôn mới thật cầm xa sạm đại ca đi, tam để giải báo cáo sau tua, tham gia giải pel sạm đại ca bình một ngày đi, có phải bỏ cái lực hôm nay sau tua, cho tập quan sau tua tham gia chuyên chụp chọn nôn chi, ai cho rùm nâng tam đan cái chấm đại ca sạm đại ca bị chấm ngái, bị mật tục không khôn mới thật được cầm xa sạm đại ca đi, không giải pel này tham gia sạm đại ca tham gia ngày đi, bài hai chiếc bản to thế này, ông nhiệm đẹp. Đói anh đã làm tạm bị thiên bởi phê bì bì có này bị thiên tây khăn ống Ở vô tổ có ông dùm rẻ nâng thư cách để bị thi mùi tiết Chỉ lại tốt tình nâng xâm nào xong rồi bảo mình tự vì cà phê cái đây nôn chí Ông dùm rẻ bàn ở tù lịch khẩn mùi rồi bảo khổng mình tự vì cà phê cái đây nôn chí Để bàn xâm nào xong rồi ông dùm rẻ xa là tạm bốn Phát đo xích cà phê cái đây đo lục lưu Số văn ná đại chế tì bạc xa chấp bắp nâng khổng mình tự vì cà phê cái đ đó bọc rong mình chỉ vì cà phê cái đây nuôn chi nâng sợi bàn đã chua ấp chỉ mùi nâng cầm nọt hết lìa lìa xó nơi cách chậm nói cá sạm nói cá thằng ngày nít ai tam khẩm xa nơi lịch khất đại ông nhầm rẽ là tập bồn bàn từ túi ông nhầm rẽ vô khơi thá lục lưu số văn á miền đại quân sầm mặt ai ai ông nhầm rẽ từ túi scroll quất chia mình chỉ vì cà phê cái đây chuyên chụp chọn nuôn chi nơi chụp của mốc ông chụp đẹp màn hết được chưa này ông nhầm rẽ xong mình chưa như lục mình tự vì xuân ở rốn đại chiến mình tự vì chiết cà phê cái đây lục nôn chi là thưa cà sơn nào xong rồi tôi sẽ có lục lưu số văn ná chiến mình tự vì cà phê cái đây ao lục nôn chi này giờ phù mộc ông chúng tôi nhầm đây là đại bồng xong chơi lục xuân ở rốn sấp xong cột ông sơn nào cá xong rồi cột lục thiên 
เอ่อខ្ញុំសុនរុនមេត្តវីកាពេលលោកនុនជាថ្ងៃនេះខ្ញុំមានកិត្តិយុះនឹងវង្ហាញខ្លួនលោកលីវសុវណ្ណាដែ
all they serve to prove, Your Honors, is that the security, op security apparatus through which perceived enemies of the CPK were arrested, sent to re-education offices, and subjected to interrogation, torture, and execution was a systematic, organized process overseen by the party leaders through a hierarchical chain of command. All of the examples read by the Nguyen Chea defense were people who ultimately ended up at Krang to Chan, a place where there was no re-education, only death for 99% of the prisoners sent there, as we have heard in this trial. How does it help the defense that some of these people were repeatedly persecuted and sent for re-education before ending up at Krang Tichan? Second point, Your Honors, on this. Almost every example that was presented by Mr. Kope in these documents were people whose alleged wrongdoing for which they were being re-educated was stealing food to eat. By stealing, we are talking about people, talking about people who were hungry, who would take a coconut from a tree, who would dig up cassava from the ground. And the documents presented by the defense show that such people sometimes were subject to re-education by their unit or the commune. Not sure what that re-education would be. Trying to train their minds, perhaps, to forget about how hungry they were. But the documents also show that for those who could not forget how hungry they were and who kept looking for food to survive, their ultimate fate was Krang Tachan. It is as if the defense argument is, sorry, Mr. New Person, Sorry, we could not feed you, but we tried to re-educate you. Now that has failed, you must go to Krang to Chan and die for stealing food to eat. Your Honours, the defense described these documents as showing a picture of Tram Kok that was not, in their words, universally brutal. That is the best they can do to show the Tram Kok district was not universally brutal. Let me take just a couple of examples of the documents the defense presented to you on this issue of re-education and instructions from Ankar. I will give you two examples of documents presented by the defense. The first one is uh, E3-2424 at Khmer ERN-00. 270-755 through 56, English ERN 00322-220, and French ERN 00612-219, again the document E3-2424. Your Honours, um, this is a document from Ang Tassam Commune uh, sent to, addressed to Comrade Elder Brother of District 105, Comrade Elder Brother Police of District 105, regarding a person named Kong Vet. And uh, let me read to you uh, the first a part of this document and the last part, the first paragraph, to respected brother. 
It is about the activities of the enemy named Kong Vak, which were mostly stealing. He was such a great stealer who had been educated so far by the group unit and by the collective meetings for the past three years, but he was not deterred. After he was individually educated by a hot measure, he had only confessed and said that the revolution knew it. And the last paragraph of this report states as follows. Quote, Therefore, I would like to physically send over the above three enemies, along with this enclosed report, for further interrogation in order to seek for the undercover networks of those enemies hiding in the villages and communes, and to take further measures in order to achieve according to the guidelines of the party. This document was submitted again to try to show that life in Tramcock district was not universally brutal. And for that, the defense presents to you a document recording a person who was educated by hot measures in his commune or unit. They present a document which shows that people who stole food were branded as enemies and subjected to interrogation to try to find a network of enemies. And all of this is stated to be in accordance with, quote, the guidelines of the party. Uh, Your Honors, um, we know that uh, Mr. Kung Vet uh, ended up at Krang Tachan after this report uh, because he appears in uh, some of the notebooks um, uh, from the prison, uh, in, in two of them, in fact. Uh, the first is in uh, one of the prisoner lists in Krang Tachan notebook E3 slash 4083, E3 slash 4083, at Khmer 00068026, English 00323. Nine four nine and French zero zero seven seven eight five six. You will find he is one of the uh, appear. His name appears in the list of prisoners. Uh, his name also appears in one of the interrogation notebooks. E three slash four zero nine two E three. Slash four zero nine two. Uh, at this time, I only have the English ERN for you, which is zero zero eight three four eight two eight eight three four eight two eight. And I can tell you, uh, in those notes, the interrogator records that Mr. Kung Vet stole potatoes five times, coconuts three times, and corn twice. Uh, my second example uh, document uh, that was presented by the defense during uh, this part of the presentation that I will comment on uh, is one of the examples of uh, party officials behaving uh, quote unquote cautiously. Those were the words of Noon Chea's counsel. And as an example of that, he presented document E3 slash 2453, E3 2453, at Khmer ERN 00270784-785, English ERN 00388586, a French ERN 
uh, let me read this document to you, Your Honors, um, in its entirety. It is a 18 October uh, report from Neng Nang Commune addressed to the district party that reads as follows. Number one, enemy situations which have appeared in the base area are as follows. Lu Heng Tri, Sus Ti, Yun Yen, and Bang Non. All four of these persons have carried out activities previously reported to the party. And we have subsequently monitored them, monitored them because they have assembled together at Tum Nip Tre Tung, as was previously reported. Now today, they had another meeting, and they went to contact one another in the vicinity of Semlong Subdistrict in 106. Because this land is on the border, and when they mined cattle, they meet one another. There is no grasp of what plans they have. There is no grasp of what plans they have are unknown. They get along very well with one another. My analysis, my analysis is that they have plans to smash our revolution. For example, they beat the cattle hard when they plow. At the re-education meetings, they do not listen much, and they do not pay attention to their work. The activities of all four of these persons are untrustworthy about their positions. Liu Eng Tri was a pilot in aviation. Yun Yang was secretary of the War Materials Warehouse. Number three, Sus T was a military police chief. And four, Bang Non was a soldier, a corporal. The report concludes, may the party be informed about the four of them and please provide us information on whatever the party decides. That is the end of the report from the commune. What was the decision of the party about these four suspicious people who got along well with another and liked to spend time together? In this same document, there is a response. On the very same day, Tassan wrote to Comrade Brother Kit, quote, I have decided that these four persons should be arrested. Your Honors, this is Noon Chea's idea of behaving cautiously, arresting people just because they look suspicious and might be enemies. That was life in Tramcock District. The document uh, I just mentioned uh, to you um, made reference to uh, the analysis of the commune chief that they may have plans to smash the revolution. So let me now address very briefly uh, one of the other uh, submissions uh, or issues uh, that were so presented uh, by Nun Chea, which was documents that show a different meaning of the word smash. And your honors, uh, in every country of the world, I would imagine um, there are words that can have different meanings in different contexts. Uh, in English, saying that I'm going to kill a person means something, means very, uh, that. Um, but the word kill can be used for other purposes. Um, 
I could say that uh, someone is killing my dream to become prime uh, minister. The same is true in Khmer, obviously. But the word smash, um, when it is used uh, to smash in reference to smashing a cooperative, smashing the revolution, has one meaning. But it has a very different meaning when we're talking about smashing a person, smashing a prisoner. When the Khmer Rouge talk about smashing prisoners and people, they are talking about executing them. The fact that the word has different meanings in other contexts doesn't change that. Another a uh, category of documents that was presented that I will quickly address. Um, the Noon Chea defense uh, made uh, some presentations on documents that reference uh, hot, me hot methods of interrogation or torture. Let me make uh, two points on this, two comments. First, there is simply no basis for the defense uh, to assert that the use of torture would have been documented every time it took place. There's no evidence uh, of any such practice or any such rule. Because of that, it's, it's not probative for the defense to cite the number of times the word hot method of interrogation appears in a notebook and then uh, conclude from that that it was not common. We have to consider, in addition to the documents, obviously, the testimony of the victims in cadres to fully understand the interrogation practices at Krang Tachan. Second comment. Um, the defense in its presentation uh, overlooked uh, that references to hot and cold methods of interrogation uh, were not limited to Krang Tachan uh, documents or notebooks. It is not only in the notebooks kept by the interrogators that we see these references. In my presentation, uh, I referenced for you, I will not repeat the documents, but I referenced for you a number of documents in which commune and district officials are discussing the use of hot methods or cold methods of interrogation. That is a compelling evidence, Your Honor, that refutes the defense the position here as it shows that the use of these interrogation methods, the use of torture, was commonly known and authorized by the party leadership in Krampak. Another um, issue that was raised by the Noon Cheyap in discussing or in his document presentation uh, was the argument that because we don't have color originals, we can't verify Petsch Chim's testimony about red ink being used when uh, instructions were given to smash prisoners. Let me point out here uh, that Petsch Chim was speaking about the practice of his sector secretary, Sao who was sec sector secretary until end of 76 or the start of 1977. And as your honors are aware, uh, the surviving documents from Krang to Chan and from Tramcock, of course, uh, are only a sample or portion of the documents from that district and from that security office. And they are mostly the documents from 1977 and the first part of 1978. To my knowledge, there are no documents from 1975. There are a few records from 1976. But the bulk of the documents that were found, that were fortunately found and survived, um, related to the period after Sector Secretary Salm was, uh, uh, was Sector Chief. Um, so the issue raised by Mr. Kobe, in other words, is, is an academic one. 
um, because we don't have um, records, or we don't have any surviving examples from the period that Tassam was sector chief, in which he was using the practice described by Pechchim to mark uh, red X's next to the names of prisoners. And let's, let us not forget why it is that we don't have a set of all the records from Cham Kok, Prang to Chan, uh, and other locations of democratic Kampuchea. It is because the Khmer Rouge, before fleeing into the mountains, systematically tried to burn and destroy all the records, the records that documented the atrocities they committed while they were in power. I turn now uh, to the issue of documents that are alleged forgeries. Your Honors, let me first start by saying um, that having, in my view, uh, failed uh, to present any substantive documents that are in any way helpful to the defense, they then turn to doing something that really they were not supposed to do in this hearing. Issues, uh, this is an issue relating to admissibility. Um, we were instructed not to deal with that. We had hearings two years ago uh, at which the admissibility of these documents was debated and decided. Uh, so these arguments come a little late. Nonetheless, they were made. Uh, he is making this allegation, and uh, I will respond. Mr. Kape pointed to a document that had two sets of handwriting in it and wants to jump to the conclusion that therefore this must be a forgery. We have heard a testimony, Your Honors, that the district, commune, and prison officials sometimes were not highly literate people. Moreover, like any people who have leadership roles, they have assistants who would write documents for them that they would then sign. So if there are two different sets of handwriting in a document, and there are many documents like this, it only means that two people were involved in preparing that document. That one person, an assistant, wrote it, and the uh, uh, district, if it was coming from the prison chief, the district leader, the common chief, signed it. The fact there are two sets of handwriting in a document in no way, in no way, means it's a forgery. Another argument or another document uh, that was uh, the defense suggests is a forgery, uh, is one page out of E3 slash 4145, E3 slash 4145, uh, and it is the Khmer page 0006873. Um, Mr. President, uh, I have um, uh, a slide of that document. Uh, with your leave, I'd like to show that on the screen uh, at this time while I comment on it. Uh, thank you. Uh, if we can show the first, uh, first slide uh, on the screen, please. And in this first uh, slide, 
um, this here you see the entire a page, the entire document, um, which is has a long name, uh, but the first part of it is names of prisoners at M105. Uh, it is a handwritten list. Now, um, there were two points put forward by Council Coppe here. One is uh, this must be a forgery because it uses M105. Uh, as your honors are well aware, M is short for Munti in Khmer, which means office. So this is just someone using a shorthand term for office 105, uh, a shorthand reference to an office that was commonly called uh, the Education Office 105, Re-Education uh, Office 105. There, there is nothing in the fact that someone wrote Munti 105 that means this document is a forgery. Um, another general comment about this assertion. Um, at the same time, uh, Council suggests that this handwritten prisoner list is a forgery. He acknowledges that another document within E3-4145, which is a typed version of almost the same list, is a genuine document. And I cannot help but question and wonder why would someone go to the trouble of forging this handwritten document when Council is acknowledging that the, there is a type record that has the same information that is legitimate. None of this makes any sense. It is where I come from, something we would call a crazy conspiracy theory. And let me specifically show you um, why that is. The second argument that Council made as to why this document must be a forgery was that it contains incorrect biographical information for Miyasoka's relatives, his mother, uh, Hun Kinseng, who I believe in this one is referred to as uh, Hun, uh, Hun Na, her alias Na, uh, and his sister Mias. Surat, who is referred to here as Mias Rat. So if we can go back to the slide again, please. I want to focus you on the part of the document that Mr. Kope says contains incorrect biographical information about these two and that therefore this must be a forgery. Uh, can we put uh, the second slide on the screen? So in this slide, Your Honors, uh, I've zoomed, we've zoomed in on uh, the part of the document that has the biographical information of the prisoners. Um, the mother, Kun Na, and the sister, Mias Rat, are the third and fourth persons on the list. Uh, if we could uh, go back to the document again, please. And when you look at that. Uh, Mr. Kope has made this assertion without checking the Khmer original. The problem seems to be in how the document was translated in English. Because when you look at the actual document, the information that is next to the names of these two people is exactly correct. For Hun Na, there is nothing listed. There is just lines in the original. For Mias Rat, uh, it, what is listed is Shrai Kru Village, Chiang Tong Commune. Now, in interpreting that document, uh, a translator filled in information for Hun Na that is actually blank in this document. And based on that, Mr. Kope has jumped to the conclusion that this is a forgery. I take you through this to show you why this is a crazy conspiracy theory. Because when you check, when you look at it, there is nothing to this. Let me look at um, 
one more uh, group of documents uh, in which uh, council has suggested there may be forgeries. Uh, this is uh, the handwritings, some of the notes written by uh, former district chief uh, Tassan, who came to this court. And if I could put on uh, the screen now, uh, I have a slide in which uh, I've put together four uh, four of the notes written uh, by Tassan, identified uh, as uh, Tassan documents. If you bear with me for a moment. <laughs> And if you look at the screen, these are four documents, uh, all of which bear the name Son. I can tell you, one of these documents is one that Mr. Kope suggests is a forgery. One or two of them have been admitted by Son to be uh, his writing, and another one wasn't sh shown to him. I challenge you to figure out which one is the forgery. They all look the same. And if we could go back um, to this document again, on the screen. There's one other thing I want to draw to your attention. Uh, one thing. Uh, unique kind of habit that Tassan had uh, was using uh, an exclamation point in his, uh, ad uh, when he was addressing people in the start of his notes. You don't see this very often. You will see it quite frequently in Tassan's handwritten notes. Your Honors, um, I, I, I am at a loss to explain why it is council thinks that there are legitimate, authentic documents written by Tassan in these records, but that someone has gone to the trouble to forge. And in fact, Tassan said nothing to that kind. If you go back to his testimony, he didn't say there were forgeries. He simply said with some documents, it doesn't look like my handwriting. As I've already explained, it would be expected that some of the uh, documents issued from him as district chief would have been written out by assistants for him. Uh, would he remember that handwriting 30 years later? Probably not. Uh, to suggest that these are forgeries, uh, there is no basis for that. These documents have been admitted, and we are well past the point in time uh, to be following down these conspiracy the, um, last document that was addressed by council in this group uh, was E3-4083. E3-4083. Your Honors, this is a uh, one of the Krang Tachang notebooks, and it is a notebook that contains um, prisoner lists rather than interrogation notes. Um, honestly, I did not understand uh, any of the arguments as to why this was a forgery. Uh, I do note uh, Mr. Kope made the point uh, that there is a reference in there to a prisoner uh, being executed on the 8th of January 1979. Now, I don't know. I can't sit here today and tell you uh, whether that was a, uh, an error uh, or uh, whether uh, Krang Tachan as a remote prison uh, hadn't gotten word that it was time to flee and that there were in fact people there on the 8th of January 1979. I would submit to you it is far more reasonable conclusion uh, that perhaps 
uh, as was the case at S21, word was late getting to Prang Chan that it was time to head for the mountains. You will remember, and this may well be, by the way, why there are some surviving records of Prang Chan. You will remember that the reason there are surviving uh, records at S21 is because Doik did not get the word early that it was time to go, and he did not have time to destroy the records before he fled. So, to suggest that because there is a reference here to the 8th of January 1979, that means that someone has gone to the immense trouble to create a forgery, I would suggest is simply unreasonable and baseless. What, what that reference does mean is that someone may, there were still people at this prison on the 8th of January 1979. And thank God, that all the records were not destroyed. This issue, this challenge, this belated challenge to the authenticity of, this, of these records, Your Honours, um, we've already argued this. Let me just say, uh, the evidence uh, that we've heard over the last few months uh, has, beyond any doubt, uh, confirmed the reliability, the accuracy, the authenticity of these records. Um, we've gone to pain uh, to trouble during our examination of witnesses to try to show to you uh, how the witnesses' testimony are corroborated and supported by these documents. Sometimes it can be a little tedious to take you through these documents, uh, but we did that for, for, for an important reason, uh, uh, which is to show uh, that these documents are in fact reliable and authentic, uh, that they, uh, uh, when Prisoners have come here and talked about relatives in the Ahsoka. We have found references to those people in these books. When names come up of people who were commune chiefs, these documents correspond to that. We see the people who were in the records, the chiefs of communes and the chiefs of district, correspond to exactly the people who were identified by the witnesses. We also, from time to time, I, I like to show what I call interconnections between the documents. That people who are referenced in a report from a commune, we then see that same person's name in a prisoner list or an interrogation report. And uh, I don't enjoy having to put together ERNs in three languages and spend time reading that. I look forward to the day where I no, no longer have to read ERNs in three languages. The reason I go through that tedious process is to demonstrate exactly that these documents are authentic, they are reliable, they are the only, I would remind you, surviving records from any district in Democratic Kampuchea, they show us what life was like there at the base level. And like the documents in Phnom Penh that show what, what went on at S21, these documents show what life was actually like. For, more, for normal people, space people, new people, who found themselves in this district. A couple of uh, additional subjects raised by the defense in its presentation that I will quickly cover. The defense presented a group of documents uh, that they characterized as guidelines from the party on unacceptable behavior. And uh, one of the ones I will comment on is E3216. E3216. Uh, these are the standing committee minutes uh, for the 24th of August 1975. And when Mr. Kope presented this document to you, he read an excerpt that 
uh, uh, talked about the, the excerpt you read. I quote, we prefer to talk about the overwhelming majority of base and new people are good. What he left out was the sentence before that, which states, things are okay with the base people, but be vigilant against no good elements among the new people taking advantage of things, because these contemptibles would not stay with us even if we were to give them sufficiency to He also didn't mention that a couple of paragraphs before the standing committee minutes say that every type of horrible element exists among the hundreds of thousands of new people. And he didn't mention that in the list of measures of the standing committee, number two reads, use a mix of old and modern weapons, especially spikes to place along the border. Make a plan on how many spikes to be used in one month. All kinds of spikes must be used. Those at the height of a person's foot, sole, instep, and shin up to the stomach. Now, neither the, the reference that council made uh, nor the ones I've made uh, directly relate to Tramcock District. Uh, I'm responding simply because this has been presented to you uh, as an example of the party establishing guidelines on acceptable or unacceptable behavior. And if you're going to look at this document, uh, I think it is highly revealing about what the standing committee considered to be acceptable. And uh, finally, Your Honors, um, let me comment on uh, the last part of the presentation. Uh, Nunchea presented uh, a number of documents to this chamber, uh, documents or video on the subject of treatment of the Khmer Krom actually a couple of, on each subject. And in doing so, uh, I remarked that he made use of Khmer Rouge party propaganda. He used a broadcast uh, by the Khmer Rouge radio, which described one of those highly orchestrated trips taken by foreign visitors, uh, where there was a stage meeting with what was supposedly a group of Khmer Krom Refugees. And he showed you a DK propaganda film in which you see Pol Pot, Nunchea, and others at a pagoda. Let me say simply this, Your Honors. Mr. Kope asks, asks you, put aside conventional wisdom, to put aside the popular narrative of what uh, happened uh, in Democratic uh, Kampuchea uh, and to come with open uh, minds. But then, what he tries to feed to us is regurgitated Khmer Rouge propaganda. I would submit, Your Honors, that was what Mr. Kope really asks all of us to put aside is common sense logic and reason. That is something, of course, that no one can do. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment uh, on the defense documents. Uh, that ends my uh, remarks. <laughs> Merci, Monsieur le Président. Comme euh, Dale Lassac vous a indiqué en début d'audience, nous n'avons pas de commentaires sur les documents présentés par la défense de Nunchea. 
กรมบีการเพื่อใดลงนุนขี้ขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ประธานขอบคุณมิ
prior uh, to the decay period. Uh, However, the civil uh, war's uh, devastation was very well documented, including in refugee reports and eight agency reports which Kieran knew about. In fact, in another part of the book, Kieran quotes at length from a U.S. aid report on the conditions in Cambodia just before the evacuation of Phnom Penh. Uh, and as Keenan notes, U.S. aid said that, and I quote, uh, when U.S. rice aid stopped in April 75, Cambodia was on the brink of starvation, and that if ever a country needed to beat its swords into plowshares in a race to save itself from hunger, it is Cambodia, uh, end of quote. That is English here ends, uh, 067. Mr. President, before moving to my next uh, document, I just want to note that the prosecution also relies on uh, Ben Keenan's book in order to highlight the treatment of the Khmer Krom. Which, is, uh, which was the press prosecution document presentation's second uh, thematic focus. Now, as I have already discussed this matter in, uh, in prior hearings, uh, I will not belabor the point here again, but I would like to reiterate once again that we strenuously object to the prosecution's attempt uh, to wedge and the Khmer Krom's experience in the DK into the scope of case 002-02 as that of a uh, de facto targeted group, despite the fact that it chose not to request it to be charged as such uh, in the closing order. And uh, we look very much forward, Mr. President, to receiving the Chamber's decision on this critical issue as soon as possible. Uh, following on from Ben Keenan's book, the prosecution proceeded to present a series of additional documents focusing on the treatment of Khmer Krom and Vietnamese in the Trump Cook district. Uh, wherever those documents refer to uh, the Khmer Krom experience, our general uh, objection applies so as to avoid being repetitive, I will simply uh, list now the relevant document numbers. That is E3-2435, uh, I have to slow down. I, I apologize. Well, we actually did give um, uh, a copy of our presentation, so, but I will slow down. Um, Mr. President, we do have a, a number of specific objections relating to some of the documents that I just listed, um, so I will go uh, now through uh, those documents. Uh, regarding document E3-2107, which the prosecution described as a notebook of Krantachan, uh, we have two objections uh, to make with regard to this uh, document. Uh, first, the prosecution referred to this document in order to quote uh, the following passage regarding a person named uh, Sam Hun. Let me quote it again, Mr. President. Um, in late 75, when Ankar had the Yun go back to the country, he made demands saying he wanted to go to Vietnam too, since his wife is Yun. And he heard them say that in Vietnam, they still have private occupations and still use money, but Ankara did not let him go, unquote. That is English now, this document appears to be notes 
from a prisoner's interrogation and uh, confession. And it seems that the prosecution seeks to rely on this document, not simply to identify the but for the documents. So our objection is that we fail to see how this is in any way different from the way in which I sought to use uh, a confession from S21 on Tuesday. There is uh, no difference in our view. And uh, we believe that the prosecution and also uh, possibly the trial chamber are simply trying to impose a double standard so that it can be used such confessions in broader respects than other parties. And this, of course, relates to a more general legal question that we have already touched upon on Tuesday, and that is how potentially, uh, quote unquote, evidence may be used in this trial. As you may know, we said it before, we have appealed that question in respect of um, the case 02 one judgment, and we will no doubt be discussing uh, it at length in appeal hearings before the Supreme Court chambers soon. Um, so I will say no more about that at this point, other than to reiterate that, uh, as we said in our presentation on Tuesday, um, the prosecution characterized uh, our argument in this regard as, and I quote, unquote, for their uh, response appeal, appeal response, as morally bankrupt, while, as you can see, attempting to use the same kind of evidence in the same way, uh, as well as it fits the case. The second, uh, document, the second objection, Mr. President, I want to make in relation to, to this same document, uh, E3-2107, is to the prosecution's characterization uh, of this document as a Krang Tachan notebook. Uh, as far as we can tell, there's nothing in this document that specifically identifies uh, this to be a document uh, from Krang Tachan. Um, what's to stop this document being, for instance, from Ang Tasson or any other security center within the district? Next, uh, Mr. President, I will turn to the document which the prosecution referred to as uh, document number D157.7, in which the chamber has already assigned E3 number E3-5827. Um, our objection here is the same as our first objection regarding uh, document E3-2107. Once again, this document appears to be a record of a prisoner's interrogation and confession. And once again, the prosecution seems to be referring to it solely uh, for its content. Uh, in particular, the prosecution refers to a passage in that confession which describes how, in January 1976, Ankar rounded up the Yun people and sent them back to Vietnam, and how uh, the Yun came to receive those Vietnamese families at Phnom Penh, but they accepted only those of pure ethnic Yun, unquote. Once again, uh, we fail to see uh, any difference um, and only the prosecution's double standard in this respect. Uh, next, Mr. President, I will give specific objections in relation to documents E3-2049 and E3-4082, which, which the prosecution cited in its section on the treatment of Vietnamese and Khmer Krom, and uh, which appear to be a, a list of Khmer Krom families. Um, our first objection is one of form. Um, as the prosecutor explained on Monday, um, these two documents appear to be uh, two parts of a single sequential uh, list. 
Why is it therefore that the single list was split uh, into two documents with two different document numbers? How did that happen? And who was responsible for this? And all of these are questions uh, and more. All of these are questions which deserve critical attention before we can safely rely on this document as evidence. Therefore, our objection is here that we do not have the original uh, of this document, uh, nor of 134 other so-called Trumpock district records. We, we need to obtain uh, the originals and we need to consider it carefully. If we cannot obtain the original documents, then only limited probative value should be assigned to it. And secondly, uh, that maybe is a proper uh, moment to, uh, to pause, Mr. President. Secondly, the prosecutor highlighted a particular annotation uh, from this document. It was an annotation regarding a Khmer Chrome woman's husband who was apparently a lone old captain and who the document recorded as having been, and I quote, already smashed since he was first arrived. Um, ER in English 00290-0263 and Khmer 00079-101 and French 00774256. This will finalize our remarks uh, before the break. Our objection, uh, our objection is that it appears uh, that the prosecution's... One sentence, one sentence. Uh, I'm going to fast again. I apologize again. Uh, English ERNs 00290263, Khmer 007101, and French 00774256. And this is our last remark. Um, our objection is that it appears that the prosecution uh, sought to highlight this annotation, this annotation in order to suggest that the husband was targeted as a lone wolf soldier. However, in reality, we cannot draw any conclusions from this brief annotation as to the reason why uh, the husband was killed. It just uh, is not indicated in the document. บ่าอกุนลงวิทยาวิบ่าเอลินิดาลปิลสมระให้ให้เป็นประกาศสมระจากปีปีนี้ต่อๆเราหดอมองดับกันละอาสมันเชิญจรวิญจะไปบรรท